So I just got this delivered to my doll and this is the latest top model from Insta360, the X3. And I'm not going to bore you with technical specs right now because let's just cut to the chase and let me show you everything you need when shooting yourself on your motorcycle with a 360 camera. Let's go. So if we start talking about how to achieve the best results with your 360 camera, there is actually some physical things you can do before you even start recording. And these tips is based on many, many years of using 360 cameras. And the most important tip is that we have to be in the imagination we have created while using the 360 camera. So if you're new to 360 cameras, the smart about this is that this is the selfie stick the camera actually deletes everything that's underneath the camera itself. So you get this super, super cool and unique follow drone, follow car kind of look to your video. So basically it looks like the camera is floating above you. And that is exactly what a lot of people tend to forget when using 360 cameras. So let me explain it to you. So when setting up your 360 camera, you have to align everything. And not just kinda, but like straight as a ruler. If it's possible, see if you can align these knobs together with the selfie stick. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it ain't. But if you can, also align the knobs with the camera itself and the selfie stick. And then of course make sure that the selfie stick has the same angle as the clamp. So it's not like this, but as said before, all straight as a ruler because if you don't do this then you will tend to see some some funky type of looking i don't know what to call it but something is going on at your handlebar that you cannot see what is and that's okay but if you want the perfect shot make sure to align everything so what you need to get the most out of your insta360 x3 is of course the motorcycle mount bundle and then, of course, the invisible selfie stick. The motorcycle bundle here comes with a clamp mount and it's strong and it's actually super, super reliable. So you don't have to worry about smashing your brand new camera or even the paint on your bike if it's tilting over. And then remember, when setting up your X3, like so, a little pro tip from me, you're gonna get a, a lot of pro tips today. Use your motorcycle gloves when tightening the knobs because then you can actually tighten them 20, 30% more than if you used your bare hands. So you don't hurt your fingers. The clamp here is super convenient and it allows you to be super creative on where on your motorcycle you can mount the X3 camera. But Best of all, it also allows you to not put on sticky adhesive pads, different types of places on your bike. You can't do that, but with this clamp, when you're done filming, you just take everything off and your bike is as it was before recording. And speaking about creative angles on your motorcycle, I've actually made a long video about the 10 best ways to film yourself on the motorcycle. But for the sake of this video, I am going to show you my all-time favorite go-to's now. If you mount the X3 on your handlebar and then stretch out the selfie stick, then you will achieve this unique look with your entire motorcycle in the frame, but also at the same time your surroundings. This angle is also really good if you ride in a group together. The next angle is probably my favorite and it is also how you're achieving this GTA follow car look. Mount the clamp on the passenger rear foot peg and again stretch out the selfie stick all the way to the back. And a little pro tip, if you want less wobbly camera movement, then lay the selfie stick on your rear indicator and then use a little zip tie to keep it in place. So the next angle is supreme for track days. Firstly, because the camera is so close to the ground, so you can really see how fast you're actually riding. 
and then it also creates a super cool depth in the frame. The angle I'm gonna show you guys now requires the selfie stick tripod. A super convenient tool for your X3 and it is magnificent to use when doing flybys on your bike. So if we look at the camera itself, what is my favorite upgrade from the previous model? Well, there has been a lot of upgrading going on, but I want to highlight four different things that I really think is really, really great. The first thing and probably also the most noticeable thing is the new screen. It is now much easier to scroll through all the different settings and the menus and you can also much easier re-watch all your footage as well. Secondly, it is the bigger sensor. If I'm just trying to dive a little bit into the more nerdier section, the bigger sensor, the better quality. You have probably seen all these smartphones with 100 megapixels, but it doesn't matter when the sensor inside the phone is smaller than a little finger nail. It is the sensor that makes the quality of your footage and on this X3 model, the sensor is bigger and it is noticeable. It's really showing when you are recording in shadows. This is where the, the previous model have lagged a little bit. In bright daylight, as we have today, the footage is mint. But as soon as you ride into some shadows or that type of environment, that is where you can see the quality lags a little bit. But on this new X3, it is upgraded a lot. On this X3, they have added a function called loop mode and it is a big deal. Normally, if you wanted to record everything that happened to you on your ride, incidents and stuff like that, you had to have your action camera on all the time, filling up your SD card with a huge amount of unnecessary footage. But on this new X3, you can choose your own preferred time limit, let's say 10 minutes. Then the camera will record all the time, but every 10 minutes it surpasses, it will rewrite over and over and over again. Until you stop the recording, then it will save the last 10 minutes. So if you are in an accident or if anything happens, after you have stopped, stop the camera and then you only have 10 minutes of footage, you have to find the, the 10 seconds you actually need. That is great if you want to use this X3 as a dash cam. This is a huge plus. On the side of the camera, they have now added a little button with a Q on it and that is the quick menu button. When you press that button, you can choose in between your own pre-made record settings. So now you easily can switch back and forth and don't have to dial in the settings every single time. It's one press with the button and then just choose your own pre-made setting. The last thing I'm going to cover for you guys is the Insta360 app because it's not only a place where you connect your camera to drag and drop your footage, but it's actually a complete creative studio as well. The most important feature the app has is of course the editing software that's inside the app. You can reframe the 360 footage using keyframes inside the app as well. And when you have played with the, what can I say, the editing software inside the app for some time, it is super, super easy to use and navigate in. But that's not it, because you can also use the creative studio side of the app where you can try different editing templates, but you can also see how others are editing their 360 footage. And then the app also has some super, super tools that you can use. For example, it has this sky replacement tool, so you can edit in a more interesting sky to your footage as well. So the app is not only for connecting the camera to your phone, but it is a very, very cool creative studio as well. So that was it guys. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you aren't already. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. It's nice to see you. See you in the next one, folks.